Awesome. John Mahal Hill, UFC Light Heavyweight. Thanks for well, coming on the MMA Lowdown. How are you doing, man? I'm good, brother. How are you doing? Not bad, mate. Just been uh, looking forward to chatting to you. Been looking forward to getting out on the go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just out here right now grabbing some pizza for my kids. I got, yeah, the, man, whole, why not? I got the whole bunch with me. Yeah, man. It's in, inside and outside the cage. Busy, busy, man. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Just uh, looking forward to the fights. Um, just watched a load of fights. Now we've got a lot of fights coming on, man. So just uh, keeping busy as ever. What about yourself? Yeah, same old, same old. Just had just spending a weekend with my kids, hanging out right now, you know. Still training, still grinding, getting ready. Yeah, man. Did you watch the fights last night? Yeah, yeah, I caught him. Uh, I caught, I caught, I caught some of them. I was out, I was out at the lake house with my with my kids, so I was able to catch some of them on my phone on the way back. Yeah, man, it was a pretty pretty good event, pretty good event. But um, we're looking forward to UFC two six three. Of course, we've got a, a lot of bangers going to be on in that weekend anyway. So I just wanted to start by double checking me there. So sweet dreams. Where did the nickname come from? Yeah. I ain't hear what you said, but i say that one more time for me. Yeah, it's just a volume. Um, so your name, Sweet Dreams, where did the nickname originate? Yeah. You want to know the origin of the... You want to know the origin of the nickname? Yeah, man. Uh, so so my uh my first amateur fight, um, I didn't know what my name was. And they gave us a form that we were asking for fight names and everything. I'm like, shit... I don't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I just, I just, I just didn't think of it. And then that song, uh, the Beyonce song, "You Can Be a Sweet Dream." Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> After that came on, and like one of my teammates kind of like joking. He's like, he's like, you should put. He's like, you should put "Sweet Dreams." He's like, you should put "Sweet Dreams." I went and so I, I put that down. I put "Sweet Dreams" down, and then I went in and knocked the dude out in like forty some seconds. So it kind of stuck. That's that's what I was thinking. I was thinking it's probably related to like. Like a kind of word play on some of these sweet dreams to the person you've KO'd because your uh, your KO record's pretty good. You seem to get them done a lot. Yeah, I, um, well, especially as an amateur, as an amateur, I didn't. I, all my fights were finishes. <laughs> yeah, man. So the first time I saw you fight, now we know about the contender series, but I seen you fight against um, an opponent called Abreu. So you were. Using that that jab that you've been well familiar and known with, then you down him with a knee. So that was your debut in the UFC. Did you envision it my, to be like that? My day, my debut in the UFC was against uh was against Stosis. Is that is that the fight you said you saw, or did you saw? Are you talking about the Kovic fight? Oh no, I'm talking about the Abreu fight. The which one? Abreu. Ah, oh, Abreu, Abreu, Abreu. Abreu. That's the one. It's the way I see yeah. it. That's the one I seen. Yeah, that one. Uh, that one definitely. He wants. He wanted to get close. He wanted to get close and try to grab. So you know, we want to keep distance. Put that jab on him. Nice, Christian. Was that how you envisioned that? Did you see it going that way from the get go? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I did. I um. I was just extremely confident and comfortable in that fight. Um. Even. Even this is funny, and this is funny. My coach tells people about this. First time I actually told anybody. Before, when they did like the two minutes to walk out, before that fight, I was back there. I fell, I fell asleep in the chair sitting back there. I was just, I was just calm, cool. I was locked in. How could you uh, be calm and cool and locked in when you're going to fight? It's, it's bloody mad. It's mad. Yeah, he, um, I don't know. I just felt like he couldn't beat me anywhere. I seen him. I watched his jiu-jitsu matches and everything. A lot of people may think of me as just a striker, but. My jujitsu is is very game, is very top level. I, um, so yeah, I just felt like he couldn't beat me anywhere. So even if yeah. he had to grab me and we had to went down, I felt I felt comfortable. And that's that's the most dangerous type of opponent. One that you know that they didn't need to just be one base. They've got answers for everywhere. So since that fight, you've been on a tear, right? Now your last win, we all know about that against OSP. So that's your biggest. His resume is the real deal. Have you noticed your respect and your stock have grown significantly since? Um, I've known some of the some of the hardcore guys that, that, that pay attention to the sport. Now they um 
Yeah, they 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 put a little more respect on it uh, to it. They uh they they start they see a little bit more of what I am and things like that. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. I don't think the full scope the full scope is really given on what I am and what I can really do. So uh, I'm excited to show that. And and the way that you're going about it as well. So with the UFC, when they get someone in who's being able to notch up a couple of wins, they're looking spectacular. They're sometimes throwing them right in at the deep end at the start. But with you, it seems to be that they're kind of working up in a more sensible way, giving you a chance to get yourself comfy and just go through a lot of different opponents. So I'd say that's the best way. I mean, for me, for me, it really don't matter. I mean, to me, I am the deep end. You know, uh, having to fight me, having to fight me, even those top guys that, that maybe, that maybe like, oh, that's had, that's had a lot more success than me and more comfortable, feel like they're more established and, um, and I should be worried about them. That's a dangerous place to be against somebody like me. Because if you feel like you don't have to worry about me, you're already behind. You're already behind the eight ball. Yeah, you know, I like, I love it. I love it when a fighter comes in completely confident. I want your confidence to be as high as possible. Because when I snatch that shit away from you, there's nowhere else for you to go. Sounding like a true killer. So your next fight, UFC 263 main card. Now, as we spoke about before, you're fighting a, a fellow country man of mine, Paul Craig. Now, yeah. it was cancelled, then it got rebooked. There was reports, of course, that you pulled out. Was that true? And why? Absolutely not. I caught I caught COVID. You know, okay. I got COVID. And I had COVID in the worst way. Like, yeah. I, I got hit with pretty much any symptom you can think of. I had it. You know, and uh, even still, I still tell my coaches, tell my, tell my manager, yo, I, I want to fight. I want to fight this because even even at my best, I mean at my worst, I feel like I, I feel like I should be able to dominate the best. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just that's just a, that's the expectation I have for myself. So I wanted I wanted to do it. Um, ultimately, it became ultimately all decisions I make are team decisions. I make decisions with my team, with my coach, my managers. We make decisions as a team. Um, and they decided they decided it wasn't it wasn't. We, it was better it was better to wait. It was better to it was better to get ask the UFC if we can get the same fight and get it rebooked. You know, I was like, it took me a while to recover from COVID. I bet. No, I bet it's been taking over the world. So before the fight was announced in that, the Scottish MMA scene's not been um too well known across in America. It's been a bit mixed. Had you ever heard of Scotland beforehand? Have I ever been to Scotland? Have you ever heard of Scotland before the fight was in? Yeah, of course I of course I have, you know. Yeah, I, uh, awesome. I watched Braveheart. I watched Braveheart as a kid, you know. <laughs> I love freedom. Yeah, man. <laughs> All of that, man. Yeah. I, I'm uh I'm, I'm into history, man. I'm into history. I'm into like like yeah. the old wars and things like that. And you know, y'all done y'all have some y'all done have some pretty good scraps over there, over there, y'all way. Yes. Yeah, uh, right. time. No, that's right. So on to the fight. So, Paul Craig, how well do you know his style of fighting? Have you had a chance to study it, watch a couple of fights back? Yeah, I've seen him. Yeah, I've watched him. Um, I watched Paul Craig before I, you know, before I was in the UFC. Like, a lot of people seem to forget, like, I'm a fan. Like, I'm a fan of the game, of the game, period. So whenever there's an event, I'm watching. You know, whenever somebody does something, I'm watching. So I know who a lot of these guys already are. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Paul Craig, aside from the... I, Personally, I don't like him because I don't like how he, how he, how he went about shit and how he like you know what I mean certain shit. But it is what it is. He he's a fighter. He's, he's obviously top level. He's he's ranked in the UFC. All right, regardless of what anybody says, like dude's just sitting on the couch talking shit, you know. But there are no bums in the UFC. Yeah. You don't make it. You don't make it here if you're. Bummed. They're paying people salaries. They're paying people what per night for a fight. You are getting paid what some people make in a year. They don't give that shit out to nobody that's a bum. No. You know I mean, you had to have had to you have to have had to prove yourself. Maybe you can't hang at that top level, you know, but that doesn't make you a bum. No, and especially you know? when when you think of the roster, I mean, just the UFC alone's got like five hundred fighters. So when you're thinking about if you're getting down to the top 10, 15 and that amount of numbers, then yeah, you're you're pretty much a real deal. Did you watch his fight? Did you watch Paul Craig's fight with Shogun, the first and second one? Yeah, I watched. Yeah, I watched both of those fights with, with Shogun. To me, I mean, I've seen some things. I've seen some things that he did well. He's uh, he's good at shooting up triangles. He's good. He's good. He's got a good guillotine. He's um, 
he's nasty when you let him on your back, you know. Um, but these are things, these are things that are big no-nos in jujitsu anyway. So I know these things. So they don't worry me, you know. Um, as far as how his game is like his game matching up to mine, I don't think it matches at all. I don't think he's on my level at all. You know, he's he's he has his hope is that he can get me to the ground and be better than me there. He doesn't even know if he's better than me there. There's no film for him to even study and be like, yo, I know I can beat this guy on the ground. It's not there. So, and we know he can't see me. We know he can't hang with me on the feet. Like, even he believe, even he knows that. You know, so. Yeah, man, I'm just comfortable, man. I'm doing, I'm just doing my thing. I'm gonna go in like I always go in. Free, flowing, and ready. Ready for anything. So I was going to ask you about how you match up. So, and if, as you said about footage and not being able to know about your ground game, coming into this, coming into what I've seen of you, it's always been the jab, the stand-up, right? So striker versus grappler, if you will. But now that you've been able to let me know that you've got um, a ground game in your own right. Um, I've been doing able... jiu longer than I've been striking. There you go. I didn't even know that, man. That's, that's yeah. awesome. I mean, that opens up a lot. The fight, the fight started standing up, all right? And if I can dominate that standing up, why do I need to go to anything else? I mean, if yeah. the fight goes there, we can handle it. I mean, let's we can even go back and review. Let's go back and review real quick. I fought, and I fought Stosie. I fought Stosie. He, um, he took me down, right? Yeah. Six takedowns. That's what everybody says, six. You know what I mean? That's the one thing everybody hangs up, hangs, hangs their hand in. But what happened with those takedowns? What did he do with it? None. Absolutely nothing. We were right back up. If you look at what happened in those grappling exchanges, who controlled those? Me. Yeah. Abreu. Abreu was a little bit, a little bit, a little bit different. He couldn't get that. OSP. OSP. Everybody felt. Even uh, even Uzma said. Even Uzma said he felt OSP had an advantage on the ground. The opportunity was there. We yeah. clinched up. He tried to go for. It. He tried to, instead of instead of trying to pummel, trying to get to a takedown. He thought he tried to wrap my head up and try to get into me standing. No. That's what we were all waiting on. We were all, we were all I didn't panic. That. You look, if you look at my demeanor, I didn't panic. I wasn't worried or anything. I just fought the hands and I went right back to business. Then I then whenever he rocked, whenever I had him rock and he grabbed me, I was gonna take him down. I grabbed him down the place. I was gonna take him down. He started to disengage, so I disengaged completely. You know, so yeah. I, um, um, I'm not worried about the ground. I'm not worried about it at all. My coaches aren't worried about it. You know, we uh, we take the fight how it comes, and so as far as far as I'm concerned, right now, a lot of them didn't want that. Didn't want those problems. Oh, well, that that opens up stuff. Like I said, I never knew too much about the ground game, so. That makes it very, very interesting, perhaps more than what most of us were ever thinking. So what intrigues you most about the fight, apart from the, the ranking spot that you're both in? Say that again? So apart, apart from being similarly ranked, what intrigues you most about this fight? It's the fact that I get to fight, man. The fact that I get to fight, I get to go out and do what I love. You know, um, I got a guy who's, who's from what I see, is not scared of me. You know, he's not afraid of me. He's going to bring it. And uh, I get to test. I get to, I, I get to test myself. I get to test myself whether it's, whether I come out and I completely dominated. It was a test of, to me being able to prep and be ready and go out and, and carry out and do what I needed to do. You know, if it, if it, if it gets pushed into some, into a situation where I have to, right, I'll be thankful for the, for the, for the, I mean, for the opportunity to fight through that problem. You know, I'm just, I'm enjoying the journey, man. I just, it's just the journey, man. I just love it. Well, it's at the top of the sport. So you're both going into a win streak, right? So what's to say you get this win, get another win, you're going to be in the top 10 without a doubt. Have you been keeping an eye on the division? Like looking at people like Johnny Walker, Jimmy Crute, Anthony Smith, have you been keeping a good eye on I already know who I want next fight. I know, I've already said it. I said it on my Twitter. I think uh, if you follow me, I know you, I, I think you should know who do I want next. I've not seen that. I want Yuri. I want Yuri. I want the man who just came in, 
won a couple fights, and now they talk, now they clamor for a title shot. That's what I want. You know, um, I feel like a lot of the things that, that people are impressed with that he does, which I'm also impressed by him and, and, um, and to a degree too, but I feel like everything he does well, I do 10 times better. You know, I feel like, I feel like if y'all, you know, I don't know, man. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people getting the, getting the, getting the leg up, getting the leg up, and they not, they not on the up, man. You know, so I want I want that. I really want that. I really want that smoke for real. Two fights, two fights, and then a title shot. Come on, man. Come on, man. We just we just saw we just saw what happened with Michael Chandler. One shot, one 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 yeah. fight in the UFC. Yeah, did it. It came out did it as good as you could possibly ask for. Then what happens? What happens in title shot? He had a great first round, you know what I mean? Then second round, you come out, you get caught. All right. I feel like I feel like I feel like you should you should it should be a little bit more work put in than that. At yeah. this in this in this organization. Because after 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 June 12th, after I finished Paul Craig, that's twice as many finishes under the UFC. That's twice as many wins under the UFC. Yeah. Then the guy that you saying deserves a title shot. And we bought, and if we being technical, and if we being technical, that would be two wins over two ranked opponents, as he's won two wins over two ranked opponents. Mm-hmm. Dominic Reyes was coming off of two losses. Yep. Vulcan Uzdemir, his his he's been up and down. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so you you come in, you right time, all right. You you did good. You performed well against those, two, and that's a title shot. That's a, that 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 warrants for you to be able to be edged in the history after that. I don't feel that. It's, it's the, it's, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, how the UFC tend to jump in and once the fans get behind someone or what a hype gets behind them, it kind of puts them right in front there. And I mean, his styles, I mean, he's got an exciting style. He's, I mean, exciting, exciting, but for many people to say it's risky as well, the way that he's kind of maybe a bit too loose, maybe no watching his defence a wee bit more. Do you think you can capitalise on that immediately? Yeah. Yeah, even when somebody's being defensive, uh, if you go back, you look at the Stokesick fight. Even the Stokesick had his hands all the way up. He was completely defensive, and I still hit him at will whenever I felt like it. And there's, there's, I, I, I have that ability to touch people. No matter what you do, I can touch, I can touch anybody. Did you say you've got the best job in the UFC? Yeah, I definitely feel like I got the, the best big, job the in the UFC. Because I don't throw, because I don't throw jab, I don't throw a jab just one way. I have at least a dozen ways yeah. to throw my jab, to put it out there, to get different looks. And I might utilize my, I utilize my jab as, as as setup. I can use it as a weapon. I can use it as just something as a distract, whatever. You know. So yeah, I definitely. And not only that, I can do it with both hands. How many dudes are switching and having in their jab being just as effective in, on the other side? Yeah. So it was usually, I mean. People can use two hands in that sense, but usually it's one or the other. Yeah. Go back and you look at the OSP fight. When I switched stances, when I switched to orthodox, jab lit him up, right hand came across and cracked him. Go to the other hand, other stance, left hand, right hand lights, the right hand lights him up, left hand cracks. Speaks volumes, man. How's your camp going? Huh? How's camp? Good. It's good. It's been a good camp. Solid. I always get good work in. Is it your best camp yet? It's been a great camp. <laughs> I don't I want to say my best camp. Honestly, if I ever had to choose what camp was probably my best camp, it was probably the one heading into the contender series. Yeah. And just because of the space of where I was and the time, and I was already preparing for a fight, and then I ended up getting that fight, which made me have to, which was months in that months later or whatever and I'd already been in camp so I was I was good I was sitting I was in a really good place there no, not all... saying that I'm not now I'm not yeah. not saying that I'm not now it's just that man I really felt I really I really in yeah you know I mean minimal in any any little minimal little nagging nagging little hurting things that was a good camp no, but the fact that you can recognise that though means that you've always got the potential to get back to that. You know, you know, kind of when you're at your best, and you can how to kind of rise up to that man. So that's awesome. So before we go, what type of Jamal Hill are we going to expect come fight night? Dominant, dominant, same as you always see. The same as it's always been. I'm the lion in the doghouse. Yeah, it's a lot of dogs. These are dogs. They're here to fight. 
They got they got they got big bites. They got big barks, you know. But a lion when a, when the lions step on the scene, all of that means nothing. The king is here. So all your fights in the UFC and that so far, as well as your amateur record and that, it pretty much has been a kind of dominant role. So if we're talking about dominance going into this fight, how are you predicting it's going to end and what round? I don't really do predictions. I go in and see. But um, how I've been on point in this camp, now, as far as being on point with skill-wise, technique-wise, and everything, this is the most on point I've ever been. Show up on point like this, he won't make it out of one round. He won't make it out of the first round. It's, it's intriguing, mate. Like the, the ground game as well, man. It's, the, it's always been striking for me. That's always what I thought. And that's what I always thought. Craig's going to need to look to get you, take you down um, and kind of try and capitalise on that. But now that you've got answers for that as well, I think mm. this is uh, it's going to be a pretty interesting fight, man. And um, yeah. may the best man win. So where can fans and supporters find more about you? Uh, you can uh, you can follow me on, on Instagram at sweet underscore dreams underscore J Hill. Uh, my Twitter uh, at Jamal H. My name is spelled J-A-M-A-H-A-L. And then just an H. And uh, you know, you catch me on ESPN. You catch me, catch me talking to great, great gentlemen like the man I'm talking to right now. You know, um, yeah, I'm around. That's awesome, man. Best of luck. I mean, I'm a fan of the sport. I know I'm from Scotland, right? But I'm a fan of the sport. I want to enjoy, see really good fight. I want to see both you being able to bring out the skills, all your hard work being put to the test. So a win here, big opportunities. Um, even the jury fight. If you if you get a win, this jury fight, man, it's going to be someone else. Oh man, now, if that fight go, if they if they give me, if they grant me that fight, fireworks. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. And I also want to say, you know, uh, you know, I mean, you know, I made, you know, I made the tweet, you know, I made the tweet about the Scottish flag or whatever. You know, I ain't got, I have no problem with Scotland. I have no problem with you. you know, like oh, that. Right. that's just me. That's just me digging at the man that I'm fighting. You know what I mean? And then everybody the guy, does it. That's, that's that's riding and, and riding behind him and anything like that. You know, everybody's like, "Oh, you insulted the whole country." Not really to me. Not really. But you know, um, because I have Scottish fans. I have Scottish fans. You know, I have guys that 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 hit me up and I talk to them. You know, they're from Scotland and things like that. It's just, you know, what I mean, it's the fight business, man. Sometimes people get a little too sensitive when it comes to the fight business, man. This, is, you know, this is this ain't this ain't this ain't. We're not playing. We're not playing soccer. Exactly got to build the hype up man and the way you build the hype up it gets us all invested emotionally so that's the way it's got to be man but yeah we, we get it man and I just uh, hope to have a really great fight and I appreciate you taking time out of your day to like, come on the show and have a wee chat appreciate you having me man no problem man you take it easy hope the best and the, the rest of your camp goes great and we'll see you in a couple of weeks yes sir thank you very much take yeah. care my man alright man